Good day, good day everyone and once again we are back together and uh, your favorite uncle will continue being the plug when it comes to maths and science education. All right, so if you haven't subscribed, please just make sure you're part of the family and of course you can get in touch with us. Our email address is info at mlungisinkosi.co.za for all our value-added services. You can also contact us via our website, which is mlungisinkosi.co.za. All right, ladies and gents, let's get right into it. Okay, we're still looking at forces at equilibrium or forces in equilibrium. Uh, we've already done the first part of this lesson, um, you know, using trig ratios. Okay, so uh, in this case, we're looking at two-dimensional forces in equilibrium. Right, so uh, let's start with a question, okay? So we are given there a diagram and they say we've got a 50 kg uh, object which is hoisted up by two ropes that are attached to the ceiling. If the object remains suspended in a stationary position, right, so they ask us, to calculate the weight of the object and then secondly they ask us to draw a labeled free body diagram showing all forces acting, acting on the object and then lastly to calculate the forces t1 and t2 right now we spoke about the uh, rather the triangular law of forces or vectors in equilibrium right we said if there are three forces that are acting on an object uh, and it is in equilibrium or those forces are in equilibrium they can be represented by a triangle with each side taken in order right but let's start first uh, we'll get to the application of that they said we should calculate the weight of the object right so how would we get the weight of the object okay so we know uh, that when we calculate the weight i'm just trying to change the color of that okay so we're now looking at the solution of this right so when we calculate the weight uh, first of all we know that weight is equal to the mass times gravitational acceleration please don't forget that right so that is going to be 50 and i said depending on which curriculum you're doing Okay, uh, they can either use 9.8 or 10 for gravitational acceleration. It's a constant value and it's always given. So in this case, we're going to just simply say uh, 50 uh, multiplied by um, 9.8. And in this case, that gives us uh, 490 uh, newtons, right? Uh, let's just verify that. Okay, so we know we're going to say 50 uh, rather. That's 50 times 9.8, and in this case, it gives us 490 newtons. Right, now let's go to the next question. They said we should draw a labeled free body diagram showing all forces acting on the 50 kg block. Right, so for our free body diagram, right, please always note there's a difference between a force diagram or a free body diagram this time they said a free body so meaning we represent it with a dot right so first we've got the tension there okay uh, we've got another tension there on the rope that's a tension force so let's say that's tension one right uh, yes, and it's acting at 40 degrees. So that's tension one there. Okay. Um, and again, we've got the tension two there. Okay. And obviously, we did calculate the weight. And we know it's always acting vertically downwards. So the weight of that there okay uh, those are the three forces if you want to you could show they are you know the angles that they are acting uh, at so the one is 40 degrees and the other is 30 so this one is at 40 degrees to the horizontal and okay let me just remove this this one is at 30 degrees 
to the horizontal okay right so those are uh, that's our free body diagram and by the way please also note that you know you you will be actually given uh you know the the free body diagram uh, i mean not the free body diagram but you will be given uh in this case the mark allocation and the mark allocation is always a good reflection of how many forces there should be right right let's go on to the next question they say to us well we need to calculate the force t1 and t2 now ladies and gents i introduced to you what we called the triangular law of forces or vectors in equilibrium and it simply says if we've got three forces that are at equilibrium they can be represented by a triangle with each side taken in order of its magnitude and direction right so in this case we can say look um, it doesn't matter which side you're going to start with i can start with the weight okay let me start with the weight and say um, okay that looks like a skew line okay so let's try that again all right so that's our weight there and in this case we knew that's going to be our weight we've already calculated the magnitude of the weight that's 490 newtons right the second force we know we've got t1 okay so i'm going to draw and by the way please always note it's a head to tail drawing right so there we've got force t1 remember the point is to always complete a um you know a triangle right and we knew that t1 acts at 40 degrees right now if you think about it you can either put that 40 degrees either at the base or at the tail end uh, because of alternating angles so i can draw two parallel lines there and we know we've got alternating angles if that is 40 over there this will be 40 over here uh, from alternating angles right and of course if you don't know anything about that um, it means that you still need to go and watch our videos on geometry right uh, euclidean geometry please go and do that okay so we know this would be 40 degrees over there right and then our last force is the tension t2 okay and in this case we know we can in order to complete the diagram there's our tension t2 there right and in this case we know that tension t2 is acting at 30 degrees now in this case we can say 30 degrees over there all right um, very important uh, for us to indicate that because it will help us to find out what the diagrams or what the um you know the respective uh, angles inside our triangle are right now remember this is a perfectly horizontal line and remember our weight is vertical so i mean if you think about it which means that whole angle there is 90 degrees right so if this one is 30 right to get the angle inside there right i will simply say the 90 degrees all of that force um, uh, rather all of that angle in green minus the 30 degrees and so i will simply say that's 90 minus 30 and that will give us 60 degrees so which means inside that triangle there is a 60 degree angle i hope that makes sense right and when we look at t1 right this angle here is 40 right and we know that the entire angle uh, over there that's a horizontal and a vertical line that's a 90 degree angle so that would mean that uh, this angle inside the triangle will be uh, 90 minus 40 and so in this case that will simply be 50 degrees right so that would be 50 degrees in there right now please remember sum of angles on a triangle okay the sum of angles on a triangle 
we know that the sum of angles on a triangle are 180. So it means if I take this angle plus that angle plus this unknown angle, they should give us 180, right? So I'm going to say, well, uh, our last angle, let's call it just theta plus 60 plus 50. And that should be equal to 180. This is sum of angles on a triangle or in a triangle. So therefore, it means that our theta 1, right, will be 180 minus 60 minus 50, or which is 110. So that which, uh, that's minus 110, and that would give us 70 degrees, right? So that means this angle inside here is 70 degrees. Right, so there is our triangular law of forces in equilibrium, right? Now, they asked us to calculate the tension T1, right? Now, if you remember, I showed you how to use the sine rule as well as the cos rule, right? So what are we looking for? We are looking, now this is T2 over there, right? So we've got T2 over there and T1. So now we are looking for T1, right? And note which side, which angle do we have? We said T1 divided by the sine of the angle opposite that side, okay? So the angle opposite is the 60 degrees. But I'm going to use another side that I know. Which side do I know? It's the weight, right? So it's going to be the weight divided by the sine of the angle opposite that side. Okay, so I hope that you remember that. So I'm going to say, well, I'm looking for T1 divided by the sine of the side opposite, that is the sine of 60, is equal to, I'm using the weight because I know that value, divided by the sine of 70, okay? Right, so let's find out. So in this case, I've got T1. Uh, so if we cross multiply, that's T1 multiplied by the sine of 70 is equal to the weight, which is 490 multiplied by sine of 60. And of course, if we want the angle T1, we're going to have to say divide both sides by 70 degrees. Right, so that T1, that's 490 divided by, uh, I mean 490 sine 60. Okay, let's try and get that. So that's 490, the sine of 60. Okay, and we divide that by the sine of 70 degrees okay so that's 451.59 newtons all right so we've got the value of uh, t1 and by the way if you if you want to please verify this through scale drawing right and uh, just to see how that works out Okay, and uh, if I wanted to calculate T2, in this case, what will I do? So I will say T2 divided by, now note which is the side that is opposite T2, right? The side opposite T2 is 50 degrees, right? Or rather the angle opposite T2 is 50 degrees, right? And I'm going to still use the weight because I already know that value. So I'm going to say... Uh, for 3.2 t2 divided by the sine of 50 degrees is equal to the weight divided by the sine of 70 degrees okay so we're going to cross multiply there so t2 sine 70 is equal to the weight 490 multiplied by sine of 50 and we can divide both sides by sine 70 so that cancels with that so t2 
would be equal to once again do the same thing so that's 490 the sine of 50 okay divided by the sine of 70 degrees and I get well let's just say 399.45 okay let's say 399 that's close to 400 right uh, 0.45 newtons and that's the value that I get when I use that method there right ladies and gents I hope that you understood that uh, from the perspective of this drawing right we, we used the sine rule and remember when do we use the cos rule I said when you've got two sides and an included angle right in our next episode what I will do is I will show you how to actually calculate this very same um, you know uh, uh, you know magnitude of t1 and t2 in this case using components of a force otherwise I want to leave it here ladies and gents I hope that you enjoyed this and that you'll be able to apply it in future questions from me for now I'll see you guys next time shop shop